Hello viewers, it's been a while and I am delayed here at work while my truck gets loaded and there's not a whole lot that I can do to help uh, based on how technical and organized the process is. So here I am sitting in my car outside the yard doing another video for you. Let's talk about Theodore Roosevelt. I've read a bunch of books on this guy, um, you know, most of them nonfiction. Uh, also read some, some fictionalized accounts that were pretty entertaining. So we're, today we're going to cover three different titles. I've got a few more than that, but I don't want to try to cover too much ground. So without further ado, let's jump in and take a look at his life. Right here, Mornings on Horseback by David McCullough. He is the premier American historian. Uh, you know him from titles like 1776 and John Adams. And uh, you've seen that I bought that book on the Wright Brothers and I've got a couple of others by him on my shelf. This one here came recommended to me by my friend Matt, who had uh, read it, praised it highly, and so I jumped into it. I actually got a chance to meet David McCullough in 2009, uh, you know, at a book signing, RIP my hair. And uh, he was very gracious, very warm, very entertaining, and uh, you know, took a minute with everybody who had bought books to get them signed. And at the same time, you know, he, he kept the line moving. Uh, you know, very, very interesting man, and, and his writings, uh, are, I, I appreciate them greatly. The focus of this book was not to cover all of Theodore Roosevelt's life. Rather, it, it only covers the first, I want to say, 27 years. It's been a while since I read this one. But it's, it's mainly about his family background. Um, and as the subtitle says, it's about a way of life that doesn't exist as frequently now as it, as it did in his day. But it's about his, his family, how they all you know, got to be in the station where they were at, and then you know, his, his early childhood, his upbringing what inspired this sickly, allergy-prone, asthmatic, nearsighted young boy to become this titan of masculinity at the end of the 19th century. And, you know, he was, he was a boxer. He was a sportsman. He loved the outdoors. At the same time, he was an intellectual. He loved reading. He loved, you know, learning and engaging on subjects. I mean, the, this man had absolutely limitless energy, and he never stopped, you know, pursuing his, his own self-improvement. So it's important, I guess, to look at the early years of his life to figure out where that drive came from. His, his family, his upbringing, that was huge in, uh, in accomplishing that. So um, check out Mornings on Horseback by David McCullough. As is the case with a lot of biographies that delve into, into the details, it can get a little bit dry at times. If I remember right, the audio was about 19 hours. And uh, I, I kind of switched back and forth between the paperback and the audio when I was listening to it about 10 years ago. Um, you know, so be prepared for that, but uh, the, the details are worth the effort that it takes to, uh, to absorb them and process them. So definitely read Mornings on Horseback. Well, there are plenty of comprehensive biographies about Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, there are also some episodic nonfiction books that study just you know, particular years of his life, you know, like Mornings on Horseback. This one right here, just covers his time with uh, with the Rough Riders, with the Volunteer Regiment. Talks about who they were, how they got together, what their role was in the Spanish-American War, and it's it's a, again a great insight into Teddy Roosevelt's character. Um, you know, th this guy was was eager for accomplishment, for glory, but not just you know for for the sake of his own self-aggrandizement. He wanted to participate in big, great, grand things. Like he he wanted to achieve. He wanted to to test himself, to push himself, to improve. That's why he was always learning and always excelling in these physical things. And when it came time to uh, to fight for his country, he was actually concerned about getting to Cuba too late for the fighting. Uh, you know, there were there are letters that the book references that talk about you know he he was he was concerned about not making it there on time once he got the volunteers together. Uh, there are plenty of little anecdotal things in this book as well, like the fact that. Uh, all their uniforms were made by uh, by volunteers in the Midwest, by you know women working in these textile factories, and I try to imagine what the culture was like then and how different it is now. That um, you know there was such a, a premium placed on on accomplished men, and one of the ways to become an accomplished man was to become a, uh, a successful soldier and. You know, like now, there was no shortage of, of military campaigns to engage in back then, but these women who were making these uniforms, it wasn't uncommon for a man to receive his uniform down in the south after it had been made in the Midwest or up in the north, to put it on 
go through the pockets and find a note from a woman that said, you know, here's an offer of marriage to whoever ends up wearing this uniform. Like, just just fascinating. I, I don't imagine it's the kind of thing that happens a whole lot now. Things have become, well, I mean, with even with the differences in the social side of our culture, uh, you know, things have become over-industrialized. All of our uniforms are probably made in Taiwan, but that's a separate story. Uh, you know, the, the bit about how the Spanish-American War came to be and, uh, you know, how we ended up in it and what Teddy Roosevelt's role was in it was was fascinating. It's, it's inspiring to read about not just accounts of, of heroism in the battlefield, but about the core values that somebody has inside that drives them to be the way that Teddy Roosevelt was. Uh, my senior year government teacher in high school, I still remember this, it's like one of the most uh, you know, deeply ingrained things that I learned from him on, on open house night. You know, when the parents go through and the teachers talk about what they're gonna teach that year, you know, he said his goal was for the students to, to either have values at the end of the year if they didn't have their own values you know philosophical political whatever and if they already do have values like they would have likely inherited from their parents to have a reason for that you know he he wanted people to be able to explain their positions on things understand their own motivations you know the, figure out what it was that that they valued and and that's incredibly important. You know, what what is the most important thing to you? You can look at Teddy Roosevelt's life and you know what the most important things were to him, not just because of what he was writing about, but because of what he did. And that is very much on display during his time with the Rough Riders in the Spanish-American War. This last one here is the third in a series of four books by Mike Resnick. It's called The Doctor and the Rough Rider. It's a weird West tale. Um, Mike Resnick passed away last year, early 2020, and uh, he was a titan in the science fiction writing community. Um, I've still got friends that are, are published with some of the big publishers that, that knew him. They still kind of refer to him as, as Uncle Mike. They were, they were very sad over his passing. I've read maybe half a dozen of his books and enjoyed them all. I really like delving into his imagination. And one of the things that impresses me about his work is the amount of historical research that he does when he's writing about historical figures and putting them into historical fiction. Largely, this series is about uh, Doc Holliday, John Henry Holliday. Um, if you've seen Tombstone from 1993, I think it was, he's the one that was played by Val Kilmer in an excellent performance that somehow did not gain him an Oscar. Throughout the, uh, the series, Doc Holliday is the main character. You do meet uh, the Earp brothers in the first book. The second book uh, you know, brings Billy the Kid into it. You've got Johnny Ringo. You've got all those kind of larger than life Western outlaws from the uh, the end of the 19th century, but the difference between you know this fantasy series and reality is that uh, the westward expansion has largely been pushed back by uh, by the Comanches, by the other Native Americans. Um, Geronimo's in the book, and Resnick does just as much research on him as he does on these other figures, uh, even going so far as to uh, to emphasize that you know his his native name is is Goyathle. Geronimo was a name given to him by uh, by Euro settlers. But anyway, the third book in this series it has, uh, has Teddy Roosevelt teaming up with, uh, with Doc Holliday. You've also got Thomas Edison and Ned Buntline in this series. They're the inventors, and so you can see you know, on the cover of the book here that uh, you know, they've got fancy steampunk, arcane, electrical weapons and stuff. All that's fine and dandy and makes for a very good entertaining read, and Resnick is a, is a very fast-paced writer, and his dialogue is spot on. But what impressed me about this series was, you know, after I've, I've read these uh, non-fictions about Teddy Roosevelt, seeing like, wow, this is really consistent with the facts that I've read about Teddy Roosevelt. You know, he's he's this guy who gets up early and reads a book before breakfast and runs five miles and and just just never stops. It, it was fascinating. So, uh, if you're looking for a good fiction read, I recommend delving into this series. Content warning: uh, there's language. You know, there's even you know, up, up to and including the F-bomb, and uh, there are um, suggestions of sensuality more heavily in the first book than the rest of them, but, you know, there's a whorehouse and, you know, other, other Wild West staples, so it's it's not one that's watered down on that front. Uh, you know, it's it's an adult series, but uh, the, the writing and the storytelling are just incredible, fantastical, and uh, and I highly recommend it. Closing, what I want to say is I delve into these biographies and into these you know, historical accounts to think about who came before and what they would do if they lived in this age of 
technological ease and and comfort and, and access to resources. Um, you know, reading about the difficulties of, of the lives of those who came before me helps me to put my own problems in context. Uh, you know, thinking about the last year and a half with the COVID lockdowns and all that stuff, um, you know, it's it's been difficult for us relatively because we're used to a, a, a different degree of of access to resources and mobility and, and liberty and, and all that stuff. Uh, we live in a very uncommon time. Uh, the, the comfort level of our lives is what's uncommon. And keeping that in perspective kind of helps you to keep your, your sanity, I guess. And uh, you know, thinking about you know, men like Teddy Roosevelt and how they lived and how he might live in a time like ours helps me to think about what I can do differently to, to live a more fulfilled life. So check out these books. Let me know what you think. And if there are any others that you would recommend about the uh, 26th president of the United States, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, you guys know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. And if you want more, please click subscribe so that I can keep doing this. I've been hovering just over 800 subscribers for a couple of months now. I would like to hit 1,000 by the end of the summer, and I need your guys' help to do that. So uh, please continue doing what you do. We'll see you next time.